How's it going, guys? My name is Savarish, and if you remember last year, I got a Charger Hellcat straight from Dodge, and Motor Trend gave me some money to modify it so I can go racing in Roadkill Nights. Now, this year, they told me that they wanted me at Roadkill Nights again, but they were just going to give me the drivetrain, and I had to pick the car. Now, I had a lot of options into which I could put a Hellcat engine, but I figured that I would do something a little bit different and give it to a friend. You see, I have a friend that has a car. And that car is interesting, but it could be more interesting. It has some power, but it needs some more power. And that's why today we're gonna turn an old cop car into a pickup truck and then give it 800 horsepower. I know that's not where you thought this was going, but that's where this is going. It's gonna be a lot of work. So if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it and consider subscribing if these are the kinds of cars and projects that you like to see. Now, this is not my car. This is not my shop. I am not at home, but we're still gonna have a lot of fun because I am in Georgia, I am in Wrench Everyday HQ, and I am at my friend Jared's shop because this is his car. Hello. Hi. So, um, First off, there's yeah. something special about this car, there, right? There's a lot of fun history with this car. So most of it was used in the movie Need for Speed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's your fault that I ended up with Project Roadblock. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there to pick up your fake Lamborghini and I saw this poor thing piled up with stuff on top of it, covered in dust and had to rescue it. And then we finally got it working uh, with all the electronics. We had to get an entire another charger and we had just gotten it pretty much mechanically sorted. It needed some suspension help. I was really enjoying driving it. And then mother nature happened. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, what that is. So welcome to the business end. Um, <laughs> uh, a, a big tree fell on this, didn't it? Yeah, a very large hardwood on a non-stormy day that was deemed a healthy tree. But just because the back end of this car is completely annihilated doesn't mean that we can't use this car for something else. And uh, we are going to be doing something that I've always wanted to do, and I know Jared's always wanted to do. And uh, we're gonna turn this into a pickup truck. Uh, basically, this is going to be uh, cut off, like this entire thing is just going bye-bye. And then uh, we're gonna put a bed in it. And then uh, we're gonna put a very, very, very big engine with a lot of horsepower uh, in the front with a manual transmission. And oh, it's gonna be great. We're just gonna start uh, cutting this car up because I need to see this go away. Hey everyone, so I am currently editing this video. This is Freddy from the future. And I wanted to let you guys in on a little bit of a sneak preview of my next big build. And that is a house. I have moved and I bought a house that needs a lot of work. You can tell because you can hear the echo in here. I'm in my office and it is very, very empty. Now I'm super excited to get started on this and you're gonna see episodes coming soon. But one thing I wanted to get done right away is start decorating this place. I wanted to put my touches on this house as soon as humanly possible. And one of those touches is of course, putting some really cool artwork in my office. And today's sponsor, Display has me covered. Look at this thing. This is so cool. This is a Bugatti. I don't have one of these because they're very uh, expensive, but this artwork isn't. And I wanna have these all over my walls because these are high quality metal prints and you can put them on using these cool magnets. I mean, it's, it's super easy. You just stick them on and then you put them on the wall right here. That looks about right. Oh. Look at that! Now Displate has millions of cool designs available on the website for everything including gaming, movies, cars, comics, to anime with officially licensed designs from Star Wars, Bethesda, and Netflix. So with Displate, you can build collections of the things you're passionate about right on your wall. I am very into cars. I don't know if you know that, but now you do. Cars. Now I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon just looking up stuff that I can uh, put all over my walls because this stuff is awesome. But if you guys wanna see some of my favorite displays, go to the link in my video description. And you'll also get my special discount, which will be automatically added to your cart. Now this is an amazing deal and only available for a limited time. So go check it out right now. It's totally worth it.
Welcome back. So we have a car that is completely transformed. This is now a Charger Ute, a Pursuit Ute. It kind of looks crazy. I, some people commented on the Wrench Every Day video. And they're like, why did you spend so much time making the body straight to rhino line it? And it's because I knew what it would look like underneath and I wanted it as good as possible. So yeah. uh, I think the transformation um, cosmetically is mostly complete. We still have a few more things to do, but mechanically we're starting off in a big way because you'll see the hood is popped and you'll see that we are both uh, quite tired and dirty and, um, and, and wet because it's very hot. It, it is a little humid as you can, it, the sky is crying. Yes, it's raining outside, <laughs> uh, it's very humid, we have no AC. And uh, in here, so you guys can't see this, there ain't no engine in here. We have removed the engine, and not only the engine, but everything underneath the engine. No subframe, no suspension, nothing like that. Because, why are we doing that, Jared? Uh, we're upgrading. We're upgrading. We're upgrading just a little bit. Can I? Yeah, can I pan, pan over. Pan. Oh, look at that. Oh. That is a Hellcrate Red Eye engine. This is from the Dodge Direct Connection program. This is where you basically go to the dealership and buy this and then put it in your car. This thing makes 807 horsepower and it's mated to a manual Tremec Magnum transmission. And, and it has a warranty. And it has a warranty. That's the most impressive part that you buy all of this through a power broker, our, our Georgia power brokers, Palmer Dodge, and we install it, and I think it's a two-year warranty. I will have. It's not a two-year warranty. <laughs> this thing is absolutely insane, and uh, the five-seven Eagle was not a disappointing engine. It looks a little bit disappointing right it's there. A little it's, dirty. it's a it's a little disappointing. It's got a really exciting story and future ahead of it, but I'm more excited about this because yeah, there's few things better than the Dodge Charger Supercharger wine or the Challenger, just the Hellcat. Mm -hmm. supercharger wine is amazing and that's why they you can get good fuel economy but you never do because you just play with the supercharger all the time yeah absolutely you you do not get any sort of good fuel economy and i should know because i brought that and that's for parts right this this is not for parts don't you dare you don't don't touch my car, Jared. but what's real exciting is like you said the tremec manual mm -hmm. because it's going in a charger Something Dodge never offered. Uh, well, I mean, Dodge also never offered a charger in a pickup truck format, so uh, we are just breaking all the rules today. We are about to put this engine in, and not only that, we have to button up everything in the rear. The rear, we actually changed to a Hellcat. Uh, I don't know if you guys can notice, but the Hellcat shocks right there, they are uh, electronically adjustable. Unfortunately, we don't have that adjustment, so yeah. we're... We're just gonna run what we brung there. I hope whoever crashed that Hellcat was in party mode because that's how they'd stay. We also got some more parts. So there's parts everywhere. I brought some parts from my shop. So we have OEM Dodge Demon wheels. We got skinnies and we got big fat drag radials in the back. 
I have no idea if this is going to fit. Your car is not a Dodge Demon. So uh, we're going to see if this fits. Also, we have some big, big honking brakes. So these are going to go on, and uh, this is going to give a lot of stop to the car because it's going to be a lot heavier and a lot faster. Yeah, it's, it's going to gain some weight, but the big thing is a lot of speed mm -hmm. that it's going to gain. So that's a very useful upgrade. The Pursuit brakes, they were a little tired. And we also have a intercooler setup. This is an OEM from a Dodge Charger Hellcat. So this should, in theory, all bolt up. Right, or very close. We, I think we'll have to drill one or two holes and add nut certs. Because when we did the smell cat, the V6 was missing one or two nut search that we had to put in. So it's yeah. amazing how universal the LX chassis is. It all just kind of works together. And the low temperature radiator should go right into our cooling pack. And mm -hmm. fit. So right now, we just got to put that engine in that car. That's, that's all we got to do, right? That's all we got to do. We got to do that too. Oh, the extra pedal? The extra pedal. Uh, the fun pedal. And the oil cooler. Is this a lot of work? It is a tremendous <laughs> amount of work. <laughs> All right, we should probably get to work. Okay, so we have a lot of changes to this car, don't we, Jared? A lot, and my smile is getting bigger and bigger. Oh, you can barely contain that smile. Look at it, you. It ah. is so ridiculous. The boy's like, so happy. <laughs> my, it, it's it's about as uh, uncontained as my hood. Like I can't close my hood. Yeah, there's there's something keeping that hood up, isn't there? Let's uh, show the people. Oh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. that's that's strong. So this is a Hellcrate Red Eye and. It goes in like it should because essentially this is the same platform that all the Charger Hellcats were. The LX chassis, even the 2011 and newer, they're essentially the same thing. Slight differences, but uh, we have found out those differences, haven't we? Yeah, we found a few of them out. Namely, they went to uh, just about a three inch wide shock bushing from a two and a half inch shock bushing. So you had to make a long drive to pick up a uh, set of shocks. And a bunch of other stuff like the expansion tank and uh, little brackets here, here and there. Yeah. And uh, while I was doing that, you got busy on the front end. And this is a cooling pack that is a mismatch of like a bunch of cop parts and a bunch of custom parts and a bunch of stock parts that have been painted blue for some reason, I don't know. So uh, that dude in blue, David Patterson, he put out something on Instagram today and he was like, oh, my other competitors, they're, they don't have a car that has a story. Where's the story? And dude, I mean, this car is like many cars. This has been in a movie. Then it became another car. It was a cop car. And yeah, St. Augustine police car. A tree fell on it. And then we turned uh, it into a pickup truck. And then it's been uh, in car track. And right. now this. Like... And this is, I mean, there is no more story that you could put into this car that would make it more interesting. Um, so let's, uh, a ton of junkyard parts. Like it's, yeah, it's Th okay. This car, like just the chassis alone, how much do you think it's worth? Like, <laughs> like um, 1500 bucks, $2,000 or something. Just for fun. When everyone's like, Hey, see what Carvana would offer. Um, 
I think they like bought them to be nice, offer three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. I it, it said they weren't interested. Okay. I didn't even get the three hundred dollar pity offer. So let's so. let's assume it's three hundred dollars with thirty thousand dollars worth of engine and transmission and drivetrain and everything. And ten thousand um, dollars worth of bolt-on accessories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to show where this uh, this transmission shifter goes through because um, if you go over here. You don't really see it, do you? There's, no. a, there's, there's, a, there's a problem. It's under the radio. It is under the radio. So you have to make a remote mount shifter that takes everything uh, to a place where yeah. you can actually reach it. We also have some calamities with the fuel pumps because these fuel <laughs> pumps are from the Red Eye. And the Red Eye is interesting because it has two fuel pumps. There's a dual yeah. pump system. The regular Hellcat just has one. And when you have a Red Eye, apparently you got this connector and this connector is only yeah. on the Red Eye. And then it has a locking clip that you absolutely need, which we do not have. So Palmer, our power broker called, it's like a forever back order. There were 30 dealers that showed him and he was going down the list to find the one that would be willing to sell them the part. Mm -hmm. um, so for 30 cents worth of clips, it's a thousand dollar part. <laughs> uh, but now you can put four pumps in here and you can have so much fuel. All the fuel. You can have all the fuel. It's just, it's one of those things where in the instructions, they tell you, you can run one pump, but a red eye has two. So we're trying to make it reliable. Yeah. Also on Wrench Every Day, everyone's like, you can't service fuel pumps when you do that. Look, I have I have a bed to lay on, and I can reach down in a hole and just mildly be frustrated as I can't quite swing a hammer to take. You're the lock. extremely frustrated. That was not mild. <laughs> but what's not frustrating is our brake situation. Well, these are familiar wheels and tires. Yeah, so these are the wheels and tires <laughs> off my car when I did Roadkill Nights, and these are the Hoosier uh, drag radials. These are three two five millimeter wide on Dodge OEM Demon wheels, and the OEM brakes. The Brembo's front and back from a Hellcat, and uh, those fit right on uh, only when you use all the Hellcat stuff, right? Yeah. It's all Hellcat, but the spindles are different. So if you wanted to run Brembo brakes, you, it's a spindle thing. So we just made it easy, and I bought an entire Hellcat dropout, but... We should show them what's underneath there, because there's... Oh, there's, there's... We're not even ready to go underneath. There's more wheel oh, action. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, all right. So these are some Halibrands uh, that just came out with. I picked bronze because bronze and black and white is the perfect color choice, but I think it pops. It looks really cool. I think it looks great. With Brembo's up front, and then we ran into one small problem for our skinnies that you did last year too. Mm -hmm. OEM Demon skinnies. It only has a four piston caliper in the front, so you can see three holes, like three chambers, so this is a six piston on each side. The Demon has a much smaller caliper, so to run our skinnies, I ordered a two inch spacer that will set this out, clear that, sit flush with the body, and since it's not a drive wheel, I'm not worried about it just for the purpose of the drag racing. I would be cautious about running that type of spacer with aggressive launches in the rear. But this is just kind of along for the ride. Yeah, so. I think this is going to be no problem. And that looks that looks pretty. That looks oh, that looks pretty. Dumb. It's heavy, isn't it? It's heavier than it should be for yeah. a skinny. <laughs> it really is. Like you think that's light? It's not. I don't know what the speed rating is on these, but uh, just be careful. Uh. I mean, probably 150. It's probably less than that. So welcome under the uh, Hell Camino here. Uh, we got a uh, oil pan that is, uh, I mean, just look at it. It says SRT. It's angry. It's an angry oil pan. So we have the uh, steering rack from the cop car. And that's, you know it because it's oily and uh, sort of dirty. Uh, but everything else is nice and clean. And what's really cool is this guy. So this we just bought off of, um, you know, right off of a, a parts yeah, catalog. Yeah, for the LX charger chassis it's swap. A, it's a trap. very common swap. Jared made this. Uh, so he made it and it looks pretty good. It looks, I'm, I'm uh, it looks, happy looks great. It. it puts the trans exactly where it should be. Which is uh, kind of weird because the mount is yeah the mount, the mount is 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 a little cattywampus and that is not uh, a mistake it's actually because the transmission is a little bit cantilevered like that yeah just in the back like you follow it along it's nice and flat and then it's just like beep yeah uh, but right here is the uh, big uh, shaft and I will refrain from any jokes because we are a mature channel yeah. Jared um, so this is uh, a shaft made by who. Uh, it's Driveline Services of Atlanta. They're in Norcross. They have done great work for multiple things on the Wrench Every Day channel. They did 
the big shaft for the Transcon van, the, the Cannonball van. They've done it for the Drift BMW. And they turned this thing around insanely quick. We initially called and said, hey, we're going to bring this on a trailer so you can measure it so it's perfect. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out when you run into a million problem delays, we finally called them up and said, here's the deal. And we sent them just very detailed you know, pictures and everything. And they said, we can get it. Mm -hmm. And I told them, hey, we really don't need it until after the weekend. And then it turned out you were going to be driving right by it when mm -hmm. you needed more parts. So I called them up and I said, I, is it ready? Is I, it done? Like, I, I know you cannot get it done, but if you could, we're going to be nearer by one. And they got it done on time. It's per, it fit absolutely perfect. And, um, uh, and then this is going to be turned into a pretzel uh, at some point. I hope uh, not. I also hope not. but Because it, it's not cheap. When you go four inch aluminum, the billet front shaft. So really, if you have a T56 and you're making more than, you know, 650 horsepower, which this does. Yeah. Your output shaft should be billet. The cast ones will explode on you. Um, then we have really big U-joints back here with a special adapter. Because normally this would have a funky CV joint that's hard to adapt to and they explode. So G-Force has this great adapter that lets us go to what's called a 1350 joint, which is what big rig, you know, not big rigs. I'll say, you know, heavy duty 3500 trucks use. Like mm -hmm. it's meant for big heavy things. Yeah. And then we got this beauty here. Yeah, so that's our rear end. We have Hellcat axles. Uh, we got the suspension and everything put in. We put the stock ABS sensors back in where they should go. Uh, everything is uh, plumbed in other than the uh, active suspension, which this car does not have. I don't know, you can you can figure that out at and some the point. And active uh, exhaust valves. Well, the other fun thing is limited slip back here. So that means the tires turn together. They do. Which is what you need for uh, drag racing, drifting. Generally gen everything. Gen general hooning. Generally everything is better with a limited slip differential. So let's start it up. Let's, let's well, do it. Well, okay, so we should divide and conquer. There's still a few coolant lines to go. There's ECU mounting. There's the new pedal to put in, the shifter to make, uh, the vehicle wiring and integration. We got to get the fuel pumps in when they come in. Uh, all the fluids need to go in it. Where are you going? I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna be here. I'm just. I have. To. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna back away. Jared, you know, you know how to how to get to Michigan, right? I, hopefully not as uh, rushed as last year. Hopefully I can have a little bit more time than. Yeah, I think you got like three days, dude. All right, good luck. I hope you like your car. It's gonna, Thanks. it's gonna sound great. It will. But... All right, all right, Jared. Bye. All right, everyone, as we've been busy building cars this entire episode, I figured now's a good time to explain what Roadkill Nights actually is. It's a 600 foot street legal drag race on America's first paved road, Woodward Avenue in Pontiac, Michigan. We'd be competing against seven other automotive celebrities in a grudge match for ultimate bragging rights and a chance to beat Alex Taylor and whatever impossibly fast car she thought to bring with her. As I am a generous man, and I really, really didn't want to break Jared's car, I decided that it was best for him to drive and do the first round of callouts. And immediately, Jared found the only other person that had less mechanical sympathy than he did. Okay, so first grudge race match against Weston Champlin. You Hi. look, you look really. Uh, Hello. You, you you look good, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. It's been a long month. It, it has. I yeah. die. So what do you uh, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to spin my tires, and he's going to spin his clutch, and it's whoever can stop the spinning first that's going to win. I'll tell you what, my clutch likes to spin a lot. I'll tell you what, my clutch smokes more than my tires do. And also, when I try to do a burnout, boy, what do my tires spin? Not sure why that happens. That's not, that's not good. It's not really good. No, it's Your not. Your car sounds really broken. The, hey, the car sounds great. Everything that like makes the car move sounds bad. How do you feel? Weston's cars just started crunching from the transmission when he pulled up. Okay. So I may back off the strategy of trying to jump polite and just don't spin. Because between the crunch of his transmission and his clutch, I just, I need to be smart. I need to get an A to B, which the car can do. Yeah, he's gonna to try to break his car. Don't, you, you wanna you want to keep this car. 
Absolutely. Yeah. He's got like 14 Hellcats back home in the farm. So this is the one I've got. So we're not going to break it. No. But we're going to put on a show. A trophy would be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I want to win. I think the trophy is but, sticking out of your hood yeah. right there. I, I want to, I've got a trophy. Yeah. Everyone's excited about this. Okay. Cops right. are coming up and telling me how much they love it. So. Jared, no pressure. We're all counting on you. In the right lane, Weston is the car. The driver that had all of the driveline issues going into this. They have a stock clutch and a thousand horsepower. Stock clutch holding up for the first lap. Gets to the finish line first against the Pursuit Ute. All right. That Ute is an interesting piece. It's sort of a what-if answer to the Chevy El Camino and Ford Ranchero. You know, never happened, but that might be the answer right there in Dreamland. And they might have a designer thinking now. You never know. I should have jumped him. Yeah, you could have. in. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you miss a shift? It, second just decided it didn't want to participate for a while. <laughs> like it's, it just would not come in. It yeah. Would not come uh -huh. in, would not come in. Would not come in. And That's it was like, dang it, dude. Oh well. It's okay. It's all right. Oh well. Nah, it was a, it was a, it was a great show, man. Now, what did we learn? Number one, you absolutely can build an insane Hellcat Ute in an impossible amount of time and a few friends in a hot shop. Number two. Even if you lose the race you've been waiting for, the car still runs and a hand-built 800 horsepower pickup truck makes for a nice daily driver. Number three, if you're gonna lose, make sure you help the person that beat you as much as you can, especially if it's Weston Champlin. And number four, nothing comes close to the satisfaction you get when you unveil your project car to the world and they dig it just as much as you do. We all had different builds, but we all left as friends. I'm really ending this on the friends we made along the way cliche, aren't I? Oh well, it seems fitting. Thanks for watching, and as always, wrench every day.